Hello, Big Nick on the drum here. Not talking about drums today. Today, we are talking about Zippo lighters. My dad just brought, the, brought these family heirlooms out of storage, and I said I have got to make a video about these because I want to sit down and compare them. And we're going to be comparing them to this modern Zippo. This is my daily driver Zippo. And it, it's amazing how similar they are, but the, the devil is in the details. Now, we're going to start by taking a look at the modern Zippo. So it has, has kind of a gloss finish. You can see it picks up on fingerprints. And it's got kind of a loose hinge. It's, e it's easier to see, see how loose the hinge is. by giving it the jiggle test. Yeah, it's, it's a little floppy, in it? But we can easily tell, easily tell when and where it was made because, of course, it has the Zippo, Zippo branding on the bottom. You can see the letter C and the number 2005. So, C is the third letter of the alphabet. March is the third month of the year. So we know it was made in March of 2005. Nice and simple. So Zippo's had a couple of different numbering systems over the years. Thankfully, they themselves put out a chart to help with identifying and, and dating of Zippo, Zippo products. And so we're able to tell fairly accurately when this one was made. But first off, you, off, you can see that you have the Art Deco Zippo logo. It immediately tells, tells you that it's a vintage piece. And you can read, there's no date, date marks, but there is a patent number. So that patent number on here is patent 2517191. So according to the chart from Zippo's website, that means that this Zippo would have been manufactured sometime between 1950-1957. Now, now, if we could do the same test, I want you to notice something. Remember how this other one jingle jangled? This one does not. It simply does, does not. That's because this has the finest hinge of any Zippo that I have ever felt in my life. This is manuf manufactured to so high of a tolerance compared to this one. Let's do, do another side by side here. Look at how how much play there is in in the in the tolerance there C compared to this vintage one. Now, now yes, of course I'm being gentle because it's an old piece, but really, you can see the difference there. See the difference there. It's just on another level. Now, I think this is down to the quality of the hinge, the precision, the the tolerances of the hinge, but also it's a very slight difference in the thickness. Uh, it's it's hard to, hard to tell on video here, but this vintage one has to have a, a good few nanometers of material, um, fractions of a millimeter. Um, it makes a very real difference. When you pick this up, you can feel the increased tensile strength. And you can sort of can sort of see on this is the modern one. There's a lot there's a good bit of flex there. There's a good bit of flex there. And on the vin vintage one, it's there, there, but it's there, but there's so much more resistance there. So much better. So now, now let's look at the innards. First thing that I first thing that I noted, notice is that these innards are practically identical, and really, the, really, the, this is the magic of the Zippo lighter. Everything mechanically functional about a Zippo functional about a Zippo lighter lies in these innards, and they're built to the exact same specifications. They're almost dimensionally dimensionally identical and also the casings are also dimensionally ident dimensionally identical it's pretty remarkable remarkable although it makes sense you know they're ma machine manuf manufactured and using the exact same same plans so what are the differences well on the modern one the text is, text is horizontally al aligned and you have an indentation that's a that's for tensioning. That's for tensioning. That's to make up for the looser tolerance and the manufacturing that they use now. 
but that 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 will make sure that this is held firmly in place and you have that indentation and the text on both sides also of note is you have the covered hinge for the flint wheel and covered plugged hinge for the lid clasp on the vintage one i see that we have an open open hinge for the flint wheel but we do have the same stamped hinge hinge for the lid clasp uh the only different difference there is that it's oriented differently on the modern one it is stamped from this side and on these this vintage one it is stamped on this side east to west west versus west to east um and the other most obvious difference here is that the text is oriented vertically got to turn it this way to read it there is no tension in indentation and it is only sta stamped on the one side which is interesting so, so the last thing that i'll mention but the last thing that i'll mention between these two is the finish like i said this one has a high gloss finish picks up a lot of um fingerprints not really a big a big fan this one is a beautiful um brushed nickel and nickel i'm guessing type finish and it's just the the classic zippo look it looks it feels re remarkable and and um and it has this beautiful logo on it now i'm going to get into the logo more later because now i think it's time that we talk about this the lucky strike Zippo type lighter. Now I say Zippo type because there's a couple obvious tells that it's not a real Zippo. First of all, no brand. And if I can get it to get it to focus, you'll see what is stamped on there is the word Japan. So this case was made in Japan. Where case was made in Japan, whereas even the, mo the modern Zippo, but definitely the vintage Zippo, are made. In Bradford, Pennsylvania, which I can just read, just read right off of there. So, is anything about this a real Zippo? Well, yeah. The insides. You can see it has identical insides to the vintage Zippo. The only difference being there's now a covered hinge on the flint wheel. But you have the same vertically oriented text stamped on it. Very interesting. Another interesting thing to notice, um, the, the felt at the bottom that holds the cotton in looks almost exactly the same. The mechanism, uh, uh, the spring and screw that holds the flint in to the chamber, almost, almost identical. The only difference here is that the modern felt will have printed on it lift to fill. Because at some point they realize that using this fill hole is not a good idea you can't see how much fluid you're adding and you end up overfilling it which leads to flooding which leads to uncontrollable flames and that's how people get burnt literally so the other giveaway other giveaway that it's that it's not an authentic zippo is the dimensions so comparing it with the modern zippo you can see that it is ever it is about about one or two millimeters shy of full height. Full height. Now it is the exact same width and de depth, so that it can accommodate the true Zippo innards. But probably in an attempt to differentiate itself for reasons of reasons of copyright or something, that you do not have the same exact construction. Now uh, let's talk about the finish here. This has as a uh, really beautiful enamel paint all over finish. I can get this is just right. There's the contrast. You can see that cracking in the paint, which is how you can tell you can tell that it's an enamel paint finish. I might be mistaken about that. I'm not an expert on these things, but that's the that's the impression that I get from it and you can and you can see that there's some cracking around the edges of the logo especially right here around the you know the, the cleft um, and it is on both is on both sides now it looks white 
because of the video quality but it is actually that lovely yellow beige that we associate with late 40s early 50s Americana and um, it's it's really lovely it really feels like I'm holding a piece of history now we don't intend to get this running because of well it's just well it's just not in the greatest shape incredibly dusty and probably has not been used since the 50s but this guy is in guy is in perfect working order for having been made in the 50s and probably in active use throughout the 60s and I just want to just want to point out the finish on this on this logo this this is etched it is etched and then painted in with enamel paint and so you so you can see that it is it is in excellent quality there's a just a slight bit of fading or chipping along that top line let's see that might not even be that might just be dirt in there I think that might just be dirt in there but I'm afraid to get in there. I think that might just be dirt in there but I'm afraid to get in there and, and really dig at it um um God, it's God, it's just the, the highest quality Zippo I've ever ever held it's just really remarkable also fun fact for you kids out there that's a phone number at the bottom where it come on focus Focus, where it says CL88428. Yeah, that's uh, that that's what they used to do. Instead of area codes, you would have you would have letters. So this would probably be pronounced something like Clayburn88428. You know, my parents were talking about their phone numbers started with Hickory. You know, XYZ123. So yeah, just a fun fact. Fact, and uh, that's that's really about all I got to say. Uh, besides the fact that my dad's going to be using this as a daily driver, and even though he smokes cigars and I really don't smoke anything, I'm insanely jealous. Because it's just... It's just the nicest. Obviously, I overfilled it a little bit, a little bit, so we gotta, we gotta burn off a little bit. But just the fact that it, you know, this hasn't seen the light of day, the light of day for at least 30, 40, maybe 50 years... And all I, all I had to do was get it filled up, and it's it's already back in action like it never took a day off. It's just that reliability is the thing that Zippo's most known for, and this is such a great demonstration of it. That and the, the fact that it's a precision machined uh, piece of equipment, the equipment, and that you can, can feel that, that quality when you pick it up. And that's the exact reason that Zippo, Zippos are such an enduring icon. And this is such an excellent representation of that. So, that's it. Uh, if you like the video, you know, do do what you gotta do. Like and subscribe, I guess. I just put out videos for fun. This, ain't, this, this isn't putting bread on the table or anything like that. So, you know, you do you, alright? Alright? Thanks. Have a, have a good one.